Over the past 300 days, I've been simulating a semi-aquatic ecosystem complete with land, water, plants, and animals, allowing nature to evolve and adapt with minimal interference. From algae blooms and plant overgrowth to surprising animal behavior, this is what 10 months of hands-off ecosystem management actually looks like. The first step was planning and laying out the general structure of the tank. I knew that I had to have a focal point, and that would be my water feature consisting of a piece of Mopani driftwood. I used a combination of aquarium filter foam and divider grid to build the general layout of the water and land sections. The entire structure is built on what's called a false bottom, meaning that the water can filter through the filter foam to the back where the pump is located. The skeleton of the tank was now complete and I filled in the backdrop and all the gaps with expanding foam. This part is always kinda messy, but it'll eventually look really cool once I trim down the foam when it's cured. I gave it 24 hours to harden and then I went to work with the razor blade shaving off all the shiny outer bits. This was a tedious but necessary step. With the shiny outer bit shaved off, it allows the silicone to adhere to it, to which I attached a mixture of cocoa peat and sphagnum moss. I let the aquarium safe silicone cure for a week and then I added distilled water to my water section. I also plugged in my pump and checked out my water feature for the very first time. The tank was looking pretty good, but obviously needed some life. I went to my poison dart frog terrarium and borrowed some Pagostamone Helfery. I also added a wet moss mix to the backdrop that I got from frogdaddy.net. This consists of over 13 different types of mosses and micro ferns. The reason I love the wet moss mix is it allows the plants to grow in the best, most suited spot in my terrarium for them. All you gotta do is apply it and let the nature take its course. Here's how it looked after about a month. Now my terrarium needed some life and I ordered some vampire crabs, females and males. I did extensive research to make sure that the vampire crab ecosystem was properly set up for them because the goal is to encourage them to reproduce and have a never ending cycle of vampire crabs. At first they explored the land section a little bit and then they all ended up in the water to rehydrate from shipping. Vampire crabs can be some messy eaters, so I needed a cleanup crew. I went to one of my closed bottle terrariums in which I have a colony of orange springtails. These guys will eat all of the decaying plant and animal matter, preventing mold breakouts in this super humid environment. They're also a great snack to scavenge for my vampire crabs. I checked the pH in my water section and it was a little bit low, so I added some pH up. Vampire crabs don't spend that much time in the water, but they definitely needed to molt their shells. And you don't want the water to be too acidic, especially when they're in there molting because it's bad for their shells. It had been about three months now and my plants were starting to overgrow a little bit. Mind you, these all came from the wet moss mix. I didn't add anything extra. I noticed the vampire crabs really like to patrol the back top part of the tank, so I sprinkle fish food up there for them to scavenge. I noticed that the water section was starting to bloom out in algae, and I had the perfect solution to combat that. I opted to add some sherry shrimp. These guys will look great in the water section with their bright red colors. They have the same pH and water temperature requirements as the vampire crabs, and they'll eat all of the algae and or other debris in the water. Something really surprising that I didn't expect to see was that they were actually really good climbers, and some of them made their way up to the little river section at the top of the polydarium. Since I used distilled water and also mist with distilled water, I had to add some tourmaline balls to give the shrimp some of the minerals that they require for their shells. 
Here you can see one of the shrimp doing exactly what I wanted him to. The tannins from the wood and my water feature were leaching out and kept making the pH a little too low. So in order to combat that, I added crushed coral. And soon later, I started seeing my very first baby sherry shrimp. Unfortunately, I also had a major breakout of bladder snails, which are a problem because they compete with the biofilm the sherry shrimp eat. So I got some assassin snails. They should control this problem for me. The shrimp went ahead and cleaned them off, and then they set off to hunting the bladder snails for me. It was actually surprisingly entertaining to watch the assassin snails do their thing. Assassin snails hunt other snails by using their strong foot to attach themselves to the prey. Then they use their proboscis to enter any opening and slurp out the other snail's flesh. They're also very thorough when they do this. As you can see here, he's not leaving anything behind. Once they're finished, all that's left is an empty shell. Once in a while, I'll throw an algae wafer in the water, just because there's not quite enough microfilm for all of the shrimp at all times. They absolutely swarm the algae wafers. I think it's probably their favorite food. I was a little bit worried that the assassin snails would track down and eat the shrimp, but so far they've left them completely alone. And the shrimp themselves only get preyed on by the vampire crabs occasionally, so it's balanced itself out really nicely. Once in a while, I'll throw a little piece of cucumber on the land and water sections. That way, I can feed the springtails and other bioactive life. The vampire crabs also appreciate it. I also threw a piece of cucumber in the water section to see what would happen. First, the shrimp were all over it. But then there was something else that was extremely beneficial. The bladder snails attached themselves all over it. And I decided to feed them to my tortoises as a snack. Snails is something that they naturally seek out. So it worked out great for everybody, except for the snails, of course. I hadn't realized it, but one of the plants that grew in here was a strawberry plant, which started to sprout out big, juicy berries. I had to cut them out of here, though, because I didn't want it to become overgrown with strawberries. Once again, the beneficiary of this is my red foot tortoise, who absolutely had a field day with this one. After about four months of letting this ecosystem run, I made my most exciting discovery. There was baby vampire crabs all over the place. At first, I noticed they really stuck to the water sections, primarily the little river at the very top. Here you can see just how tiny they really are. I knew that they were healthy and doing well because they were molting their shells in the water, which is always a good sign. I don't really see my adult vampire crabs much these days anymore because they spend most of their days in the burrows, usually coming out at night to scavenge for fish food. The remnants of fish food flakes that I feed the vampire crabs that they leave behind are always gobbled up by the springtails. They have a field day with it. They're the perfect cleanup crew and they keep the entire ecosystem smelling and looking fresh. The water section was starting to get a little bit crowded and there's not enough biofilm for the shrimp to survive on their own. So every other day I drop in some shrimp pellets. I noticed that they were disappearing awfully fast and so I filmed it to see what was happening and I realized that the baby vampire crabs were taking them and stealing them, taking them to little corners of the fish tank where you couldn't see them. It's not really that big of a deal though because they're super messy eaters and they'll eventually just spread it all over the tank where the shrimp will clean it up. But it's still really entertaining to watch because they're such greedy little guys. It's definitely kind of funny watching them struggle with a piece of food literally the same size as them, but they always manage to do it. This video I took just yesterday, and here you can see one of the baby vampire crabs has almost grown into a full adult, probably about five months old or so, and just like his smaller counterparts, just as greedy. The entire tank at this point has become completely overran with baby vampire crabs, 
And honestly, I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with the adults when they all grow up. More than likely, I'll end up selling them to a local fish store, or maybe I'll just build another ecosystem. I haven't really decided yet. One way to ensure that all the crabs and all the animals in the ecosystem are getting the nutrients they need is by providing them with some high protein fish food flakes, which I like to sprinkle all along the top of the terrarium. Also, that piece of acrylic that I just took off the top is a great way to retain some of the humidity without fogging up the front glass too much. I usually sprinkle the fish food in here about every three or four days. That way, all the crabs are getting plenty to eat and they don't have to resort to biting and eventually eating each other. Once in a while, I'll top off the leaf litter. I prefer to use oak leaves because it's great for the bioactive life living in there, keeping the environment nice and healthy. After 300 days, this ecosystem taught me something simple but profound. Nature knows what it's doing. With minimal input, life found balance. Plants adapted, microfauna thrived, and the entire system shifted in ways I could have never predicted. It wasn't perfect, but that's the point. Real ecosystems evolve, struggle, and stabilize over time. Whether you're building your own or just fascinated by the power of natural systems, I hope this journey showed you just how resilient and unpredictable life can be when we step back and let it unfold. Make sure you give me a subscribe and check out my other videos.